everybody knows the narrative. Michael Jordan was a scoring machine, and when he went off, he really went off. That's what the Cleveland Cavaliers found out when MJ erupted for a career-high 69. It was March 28, 1990, and the surging Chicago Bulls headed to Ohio to face the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cavs were all too aware that Michael had a particularly impressive scoring record in Cleveland. Jordan himself admitted that he loved playing at the Richfield Coliseum. The fans there loved to hate MJ as public enemy number one, and Jordan reveled in the notoriety of the crowd. Michael was the most dangerous when he was challenged or motivated, and the fans in Cleveland provided just that. For some reason, Cleveland has been a place where I have always risen to excel. Maybe because the fans truly don't like me there, but I'm full of confidence when I walk into Cleveland. Michael Jordan. This night proved to be another scoring masterclass in Ohio for Jordan, but even Michael nor the Cleveland fans could have expected the offensive explosion that they were about to experience. MJ produced an unbelievable display of brilliance and dominance that was a joy to behold for everyone. That's not a Cavs fan, that is. Jordan was simply unplayable, pouring in a career-high 69 points, leading his bull side to a much-needed overtime victory as they marched on towards the playoffs. As always, Michael was the center of everything the Bulls were doing, but the efficiency in his scoring eruption was unbelievable, making it feel like he just could not miss. As the game progressed, it became clear to everyone watching that they were witnessing a special performance, special even for Michael. MJ was an incredible 23 of 37 from the field and a staggering 21 of 23 from the free throw line. Spare a thought for poor old Cavs guard Craig Elo. Elo had been victimized by Jordan several times before, including most famously the buzzer beater from the foul line, where the Cleveland veteran glided by as Jordan double-clutched his way to an iconic game winner. Unfortunately for Elo, he was torched once again on this night for many of Jordan's buckets. Though in fairness to him, there wasn't anybody in a Cavs uniform that was spared embarrassment by Jordan. Everyone had their turn with Michael at his ruthless best. Not only was Jordan putting on a scoring clinic that had until that point never been seen before, but he was also showcasing all of the other facets of his complete skill set. He was simply doing it all. Along with his 69 points, he snagged a ridiculous 18 rebounds, 6 assists, and 4 steals. Jordan was aware that he'd had massive scoring games before, but they hadn't always led to victories. But on this occasion, he was determined it would be different. He wanted the W, and he was going to make sure they left with it. I've been in that situation where I've scored a lot of points and we lost, and I didn't want that to happen, so I kept pushing myself, kept talking to myself, saying, don't stop, don't stop, keep going. You feel better about the effort when you win. Michael Jordan. MJ ended up playing 50 minutes in the dramatic overtime win and sealed the victory from the charity line. He defied personal fatigue and exhaustion down to the stretch in order to put the Cavs to the sword and once again ensured he faced the wrath of the Bang Coliseum crowd. But even the most diehard Cavalier supporter would have to admit that watching Michael that night was a sight to behold. There were many times in his career that Jordan would leave opposing fans speechless and in a sense of shock. But unfortunately for those that regularly attended the Cleveland Coliseum in the 80s and 90s, it was a feeling they were all too familiar with. Michael Jordan seemingly had the ability to turn it on at will. There's no other player in the history of the game that can get hot and stay hot like MJ could. Once Michael started seeing the ball go through the bucket, more often than not, it was lights out. But his will to win and do whatever it takes is what stands him apart. And back in March of 1990, the Cleveland Cavaliers found out exactly what that's like, again! Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more top NBA content.